Well, another friendly face that we have seen over the last few years is uh, young Matt here. And would you like to explain to the viewers who you are and what you do within the team? Hi everyone, my name's Matt. I'm a medium and producer and all kinds of other things for the team. It all depends on what they need on the night. So you'd say you're quite versatile within the group then? I tend to play a versatile role uh, mainly because um, we, we don't know what attendance we're going to get for some investigations and it's always good to fill the gaps where necessary. Most of, for, for, uh, first and foremost, I'm a medium and, and beyond that, it depends what's needed. So I tend to jump into different roles and wear different hats. Not literally different hats, I only really wear one. So with you being able to appreciate each role that there is and to try and jump into that, that specific title at that time. Is there a favourite role that you prefer over mediumship or when you're not being medium, using your mediumship? I tend to find that I really like um, a lot of the time standing in the background and watching what's happening. You can learn a lot about people's behaviour and the way that rea they react to their environment and certain stimulus as well. And in terms of investigation, it's quite prominent that people behave a little more differently than they what they normally do. And it's interesting to see how they react to to things that happen. For argument's sake, if there's a little noise in the corner or something touches them or whatever, it's it's, it's interesting to see what they do. So it's almost being able to see beyond the bravo, bravado even. Yeah, I mean, being, being a fly on the wall is very useful a lot of the time, particularly when you're going back and you're looking at evidence or you're listening to audio, um, because you tend to see the whole picture of, of what was happening and when, and you can declassify and debunk a lot of things that way. But also you can pick out a lot of things that you weren't expecting as well. It's, it's, it's quite balanced, it's quite... So within um, the Stoke Haunted team, would you then, uh, would I be right in saying that to be able to be an effective team member, you need to uh, be a little bit like a chameleon and adapt as, as is needed? I feel to be an effective team member, you do need to be versatile in what you do and you do need to be able to appreciate the variety of roles that are required in a team. Not only does it help you to fill in the gaps and, and do things where required, but also it, it helps you to see from the other point of view. In particular, you, you see things from behind the camera differently than you do when you're you're not handling a camera. You, you look at scientific data differently when you've used the equipment or when you've stood back and see how other people observe it as well. Uh, when you're listening to audio you, the, in an environment that you haven't been in, you, and you don't really have a connection to until you, you're being unbiased when you're looking at it. Um, it you tend to have this viewpoint of, of detached. It, it seems to be quite, like, quite clinical, but in the same respect, you see the whole total point of view. It's completely unbiased. You don't have a predefined opinion when you're looking at evidence. And I think that's very useful and it, it's very poignant that you do that. Because when you were there, you, your opinion is subjective, no matter how much you want it to not be. With you obviously playing, or not playing, so to speak, with you performing in both the mediumistic roles and the scientific looking role, do you find that they become conflicted or how, how does that process work? I, I tend to set scientific opinion and scientific um, data or scientific discovery, if you like, aside from mediumship. I think because they are literally two worlds apart and it's going to be quite some time before humanity bridges the gap between the two and it's a real shame um, for me mediumship is is very much a part of me and it's always very been very much a part of me whereas science is something that you're continually progressing with you can, you're always brushing up on you're always learning new things so i'm not saying that's not the case for mediumship either because there's always something that you're always reaching towards there's always spiritual progress um, but science is very clinical, science is very raw, mediumship is, is totally the opposite, it's very subjective, it's very personal almost, a very uh, subjective spiritual experience and I, I don't think science gives you that but science can give you some other very simple explanations for things that you may over elaborate on in the subjective. I think it's important to strike a balance and respect both and d discover which place both holds. Because I don't think that they're going to meet in the middle anytime soon. 
So to be able to appreciate both being equal is uh, a, a kind of a key point for you. Definitely. You don't want to fall off one edge. Okay. How do you see yourself pro progressing within the group within the next 12 months? It would be hard to say how I feel I would progress in the group in the next 12 months. I feel that with the, with the variety of roles and the variety of hats I wear on a, a rolling basis, if you like, it's difficult to say where I'm going to be or how I will be portrayed personally within the team. I think we will, we will just carry on as we are and we'll always be looking for um, different things, different areas of development and, and all the rest of those things. For me personally, there, there are always goals to pursue, there are always things to, to look towards, there's always new things to learn, new things to brush up on, there's always new pieces of equipment that we want to look at, new scientific data, different approaches, different investigative methods, different environments to explore. It's a constant adventure, it really is, and I, I can't say where I'm going to end up. There's no real compass other than the pursuit of evidence which I think is, is the most profound thing as to why we're here in the first place. We want answers. We, we don't want to be happy being entertained. There's always more, always more to reach for. So we've talked a lot about how you are within the team. So can you tell us who Matt is beyond the team? It's a good question. I'll let you know when I ask him. Um, but no, how Matt is beyond the team? It, it's a very good question. I mean. I spend a lot of time being busy, I'm always doing something, whether it's it's out in the garden doing some bits and bobs or building things out of, out of pallets, which is a fun hobby of mine. Um, I practice martial arts in the form of Shotokan Karate at the moment. Um, I like to go to the gym to keep fit. I like to design websites and do other things in my spare time. And Occasionally I'll get around to writing music or photography. I'm always up to something. Um, so there's, there's always something to be getting on with. So if you could only use five words, what five words would best describe you? Five words that would describe me? I don't think I can. There you go, that's five words. Well, very clever. <laughs> okay, have you got any final thoughts or messages for any of the viewers? Uh, a message to all you viewers, thank you for following us for all this time, whether that's a short period of time or a long period of time. Um, we're always here. If you want to speak to us, send us a message or anything of the similar. You can always give us video responses. That would be fun. Um, we're here. Come and talk to us. Come and get to know us. I, I, I do feel that um, there are people out there that really don't know us like we are. They, they have a perception of us. I don't know, come and see us, get to know us, see how we really are. That's just a camera and this is just me talking to a camera. You should know me personally, that could be more fun. Well, what time are we on? Have we got time for you quickly, do you? <laughs>